Hi y'all. So today we are going to be working on 2.4, which is combinations of functions and composite functions. Um, so we'll just jump right in. So this is the definition um, about finding domain and the difference between polynomials and other types of domains we're going to look at throughout the lecture. So what you really need to take from this is that if it's a polynomial, the domain's always all real numbers. And you can state it plainly as all real numbers, or you can write it as negative infinity to positive infinity in interval notation. So here I'm going to write it as negative infinity to positive infinity because we know this is a polynomial because it has a variable to a power. Same thing here. We have a quadratic. So the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. So here, um, when we are talking about the square root function, it's a little different. We can't have negative values when we take a square root or else we get an imaginary number. We learned that in a previous lesson. So because of that, for graphing purposes, our domain has to have um, a value greater than or equal to zero um, underneath the square root sign. So to solve these, we're going to take whatever's in the square root. So here it's x plus 2. And we're going to say that it has to be greater than or equal to 0. And then we're going to solve for that x. So if I subtract 2 from both sides, I get x is greater than or equal to negative 2. And so then I can write this in interval notation um, of the values that are x that is greater than or equal to negative 2. So we use a bracket because the equal to portion means that negative 2 is included in this interval. And then since x has to be greater than negative 2 here, we're going to use the positive infinity because we're, that's the only stipulation. Is it has to be greater than, so that can go on forever. So we can do the same thing for um, this second one. We're going to let 5 minus x be greater than or equal to 0. We can subtract 5 from both sides, and we get negative x is greater than or equal to negative 5. We need to deal with that negative there. So we're going to divide both sides by negative 1. Just remember when you're dealing with intervals, if you divide or multiply by a negative, you have to change your sign. You're going to swap it. So we're going to get x is less than or equal to positive 5 now. So we can write that as well. This time x is less than or equal to, so we're going to go from negative infinity to 5. We have the equal to, so the 5 is included, so we use a bracket. The last type where we have to worry about the domain being interrupted because of the type of function it is, is when we're dealing with rational um, functions. And so if we're dealing with a rational function here, we can't have the denominator equal to zero because division by zero is undefined. So we just uh, take the denominator and make sure it's not equal to zero. We want to do this after we factor. So if we factor here, um, on this first one, we get x plus 2, x plus 5. Now, neither one of those can be equal to 0 because if they were equal to 0, then I would get 0 in my denominator. So we're just going to say x plus 2 cannot equal 0 and x plus 5 cannot equal 0. Now we can solve for x. So if I subtract 2 from both sides, I get x cannot be equal to negative 2. And if I subtract 5 on this one from both sides, I get that x cannot be equal to negative 5. So that's the stipulations. x can't equal negative 2 and x can't equal negative 5. Because what actually happens in your graph at those points is that we have asymptotes. So because they're not inclusive and we know we can't equal them, we have to think about all the points other than negative 2 and negative 5. So we're going to start with negative infinity. And we're going to go to the first smallest point. Well, negative 5 is smaller than negative 2, so we're going to go to negative 5. 
because it's not equal to negative 5, we're going to have to not include that. So we're going to use a parenthesis instead of a bracket. And then we're going to union because after we skip over negative 5, we're going to pick back up right past negative 5 and go all the way to negative 2. And then same thing, we're going to union negative 2 to positive infinity here because we cover every value other than negative 2 and negative 5. So for this last one here, we're going to do the same thing. I have x minus 2. We know it cannot be equal to 0, so x cannot be equal to 2. So if x cannot be equal to 2, then we're saying that we're going from negative infinity to negative 2, union, oh, I'm sorry, not negative 2, positive 2. 2 to infinity. So now that we've uh, refreshed our memories on domains when it comes to these different types of functions, um, let's go over these definitions for sums of functions, differences of function, product of function, and quotient of function. So this is just the formula you're going to use to be able to do these functions. And I'm going to model this for you, so I'm not going to read this to you. You can read it on your own. So if we look at finding algebraic functions here, given that f of x is x plus 3 and g of x is x squared minus x, find f plus g of negative 5. So what we're doing here is we're saying, okay, we have f of x plus g of x, but we want it at negative 5, right? So that's what we're saying here, f plus g of negative 5. So instead of having those x's there, we're going to have negative 5 there. So that simply means that I'm going to take my x function, my f function, and substitute in 5 for the variable. So I have 5 plus 3 plus, I'm going to do the same thing for the g function, 5 squared minus 5. And then I just solve. So 5 plus 3. Um, Oh, negative 5. Sorry, negative 5. Let me rewrite that. So we have negative 5 plus 3, negative 5 squared minus negative 5. There we go. So negative 5 plus 3 will give me negative 2. There's a plus sign in between there. Plus... Now, negative 5 squared is just 25 because that negative is included, right, inside there. And then we have plus a positive here, so that's plus 5. So we're going to have negative 2 plus 30, so we get positive 28 as our solution. So here we're looking at a subtraction one. Um, this one is just with x, so we know that we're going to do f of x minus g of x according to our formulas. So we're doing x squared minus 4x minus 2 minus x. So then we need to distribute. There's nothing to distribute on the first one, x squared minus 4x, but we do need to distribute this negative on the second one. So we get minus 2 plus x, then we can combine like terms, so we get x squared minus 3x minus 2, that's our solution here. So once we do that, um, it wants the domain, so we know the domain of all um, parabolas, quadratic functions, polynomials, is negative infinity to positive infinity. So that answers the first question. Now the second question wants um, f minus g of 3. Well, we've already found f minus g, so now we just take the function that we found for x, f minus g, uh, and we're going to substitute in 3. So 3 squared minus 3 times 3 minus 2. So when we do that, we get 9 minus 9 minus 2. So we end up with negative 2 as our final answer.
So here we're going to be multiplying and we're going to have 8 in there. So we're just multiplying those functions. So I have x squared minus 6x and 7 times 7 minus x. Well, we want to do it at 8. So I'm going to do 8 squared minus 6 times 8 times 7 minus 8. So 8 squared is going to give me 64. 6 times 8 is going to give me 48. And then 7 minus 8 is going to give me negative 1. So then 64 minus 48 gives me 16. And then 16 times negative 1 gives me negative 16 as my final answer. So this one here, we're just looking at what we get when we have an x. So we have x squared minus 4 times x minus 2. Remember, when you have these and you're just keeping the x, you have to FOIL or you have to multiply it out. So first, I'm going to do x squared times both things in the second one. So I get x cubed minus 2x squared. Then I'm going to do the minus 4 times both things. So I get minus 4x plus 8. And so that's all we have to do on that problem there. Oh, it's a division problem, not a multiplication problem. So that's what we do if g times f of x is what we're wanting. So let's do the actual problem that they want done. This g times f of x, or g divided by f of x. So for this one here, we're going to take our g and put it in the uh, numerator and our f and put it in the denominator. And so now we have this. We need to see if we can um, factor or make this, uh, simplify this. So we can because the bottom factors to x plus 2 times x minus 2. So when we do that, our x minus 2s cancel and we're left with 1 over x plus 2. So that is our solution. We want to find our domain, and because this is a rational function, we know when we find our domain, we have to say, okay, x plus 2 cannot equal 0. So x cannot equal negative 2. So our domain in this case is from negative infinity to negative 2, union negative 2 to positive infinity. All right, so we've reviewed several of these at this point, so I'm going to go ahead and let you do this one on your own. You can check your answer in Blackboard with the annotated notes. So go ahead and pause the screen, try this one, and then when you come back, we'll work on the next couple. Um, this one has the square root in it, so I'm also going to let you try this one because we've gone over all the different types of functions, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction, so I feel like you can do this. Just remember that if you're trying to find domain on this one right here, you have to set whatever's inside of here. I'm just going to use um, m greater than or equal to zero to find domain. So that's just a reminder, but go ahead and pause the screen and try this one as well. And again, you can check your answer on the annotated notes that are posted in Blackboard. So the next thing we're going to talk about is compositions of functions. Um, Let's look at this first before we do compositions of functions. We're going to work on this one together. So um, these are special cases where you get um, maybe answers that once you get them, you don't know exactly what that means. So we're going to look at that together. So for this first one, here, f times g of 3, we're going to do 3 squared minus 9, because that's our f, times 2 times 3 plus 1. And then we're just going to solve using order of operations. So we get 9 minus 9 times 6 plus 1. So then here we get 0 times 7. Well, we know that's 0. 
So in that case, it's just zero. It's not complex. There's no um, hidden agenda under there. It's just zero as your solution. But sometimes that throws people off. So let's look at the next one. It's another special case. So if I have negative one half squared minus nine over two times negative one half plus one, this one here, I get one fourth minus nine over negative one plus one. Regardless of what this ends up being, the one fourth minus nine, here I'm gonna get zero. We know here that division by zero is undefined. And since we know that, we're going to say that we have an undefined solution. We can't solve um, this problem. So that is another special case. So if you just get zero total, you're good. But if you get zero in the denominator, it's an undefined. So we have two more special cases here. So let's go ahead and look at these. This first one here, we're going to have um, negative 4 plus 4 times the square root of negative 4 minus 1. And so if we take a look at this, this is 0 times, here we get the square root of negative 5. Some people look at this negative 5 and go, oh, this is imaginary, it doesn't have a solution. But because anything times 0 is just 0, that's the solution here. It's 0. It's that straightforward. So let's look at the next one. So if we have h1 plus 4 over the square root of 1 minus 1 here, we get 1 plus 4 over the square root of 0. Well, the square root of 0 is simply 0. So again, this one is undefined. So that's just reiterating that idea that if you get 0 as a complete answer, then the answer is 0. If you get 0 as a denominator, the answer is undefined. So the next thing we're going to look at is composition of functions. So composition of functions is putting a function in type, inside of a function, essentially. So if you have f, we call, read this as f of g here. If you have f of g of x, you're doing f. So if we have f g of x, we're just taking g of x and putting it inside of f. The same thing for g of f of x, we're taking f of x and putting it inside of g of x. So let's take a look at this first one. So we want f of g of 7. So what that means is that we want f, where we're solving g of 7 inside of f. So first we solve g of 7. So let's go over here and do g of 7. So if we do g of 7, we have 7 squared plus 5. Well, 7 squared is 49 plus 5. So 49 plus 5 is 54. So now when we come back here, we can write this as f of, substitute in for g of 7, what we found, 54. So now when we continue the problem, we're going to take the f function, negative 5, and substitute in 54 for the x. So then we get negative 270 minus 1, which gives us negative 271. So that is our final answer. So I'm going to let you try this one. Again, you can check your answer in um, Blackboard on the annotated notes. This one is similar to the last two. The only difference is this time we want g of f of 4. So that means that we're doing g of f of 4 first. So when we come over here to solve, we're doing f of 4 instead of g to begin with. So we have negative 4 minus 1. So we get negative 5 here. 
So now we're going to take that and put it inside of this function. So we have g of negative 5 that we're looking for. So g negative 5 squared minus 3. So then we get 25 minus 3. So we get 22 is our final answer. So the only difference there is which one you're doing first. So this one, we want to find both g of f of x and f of g of x. So now we'll get both. On the first one, g of f of x, we know that I'm doing g of f of x on the inside. So anywhere in g that there's an x, I'm going to fill in f of x. So I have 5. The x right here is going to be 2x squared plus 2 because that's my f of x, and that's what I'm substituting into the formula for g. So then, once I do that, I can simplify. So I can distribute and get 10x squared plus 10 minus 1, and so that is as far as I can go with that one. On this other one, we're doing f of g of x, so it means this time we're going to put g inside of the f function. So we have uh, 2, and then there's x squared here, so we're going to put g of x inside of there. 2 times 5x minus 1 squared plus 2. So this one, we have to deal with this square. We can't distribute a square over subtraction, so we can rewrite it as 5x minus 1 times 5x minus 1 here, because that's what it means to be squared, right? So we get 2 times 25 x squared minus 10x plus 1 plus 2. So then we can distribute that too. So we get 50x squared minus 20x plus um, 2 plus 2. So then we can combine like terms. So we get 50x squared minus 20x plus 4. So what I want you to see here is these are not equal. So doing f of g of x and g of f of x are different functions, okay? So it's important to pay close attention. So this one here is a special type. Um, because when we do this, we're going to get the same answer, which means that this is a particular type of function. These functions are what we call inverses of each other. So we're going to look at that more in 2.5. So let's go ahead and just see how the composition of functions work for both of these and see how we both get the same, how we get the same answer on both sides. So if I do f of g of x first, We know that means we're doing f with g of x on the inside. So we're going to do 3, x plus 3 over 3, minus 3. So these 3's cancel, and we get x plus 3 minus 3. So then we get x. Now the second one, we can do g of f of x. And so we know this time we're putting f of x inside of g. So we have um, 3x minus 3 plus 3 over 3. So if we do that, this 3x minus 3 plus 3 over 3, that goes away. And we get 3x over 3, which will just give us x. So these two come out to the same thing. Since they do, that means these two functions are inverse functions. And so you'll see that in 2.5, we're going to start talking about inverse functions. So we'll pick up there next time.